Hey guys. Arduino. In this video. Arduino. Stop it. Arduino. No. Seriously, stop it. Arduino. Chalk this up as the third in a series of beginner Arduino tutorials. Where's the rest? Well, thanks to the balding chin strap hunk of nerdiness you see in front of you, I've created an Arduino playlist. A Plarduino and Arduino list. In it, you'll find all my Arduino tutorials for your viewing pleasure. So if you want to, clicky clicky. What we're gonna be doing in this week's video is I'm gonna show you how to use an Arduino to control a servo motor. So most of you guys probably already know what a regular motor is and what it does. It either spins one way or another, and at most you can speed it up or slow it down by adjusting the voltage. A servo, on the other hand, is a motor that gives very precise movement. Essentially, it's just a motor combined with something called a variable resistor, also known as a potentiometer. Big words, I know, but chillax man, old Gigafide's about to drop the knowledge bomb on ya. Basically a potentiometer is just a knob, like the kind that you'd find on volume controls or an old TV set. Last week we talked about resistors and how they resist the flow of voltage to make it lower. Continuing with that idea, a variable resistor can vary the amount of resistance to essentially control the flow of voltage. This combined with a control circuit monitors the angle that the motor is at. And when the motor is at the desired angle, the potentiometer shuts off the voltage to the motor. If it isn't at the correct angle, the potentiometer allows voltage through until the motor is where it's supposed to be. Okay, so how do we control the angle that the servo is supposed to be at? Well, we can either do this through the Arduino code, or we could use another potentiometer to control and adjust the angle. So get yourself a servo, a potentiometer, some wires, and a breadboard, and let's hook it up to the Arduino. Your potentiometer should have three pins. Attach those pins into three separate rows on your breadboard. The left one is for power, so connect it to the 5-volt pin on the Arduino. The middle one outputs the status of the potentiometer. So let's send that status data to the Arduino input pin 0 so that it can read the position. The last post is for ground, so connect it to the ground pin on the Arduino. Now grab your servo and let's juice it. The darkest wire, generally brown or black, should connect to the ground. You can just connect it to the same breadboard row as the ground wire for the potentiometer. The middle wire, generally red, connects to the 5 volt row. And the last wire connects to output pin 9 on the Arduino so we can output the position data. Wunderbar! Now plug that sucker into your PC and let's get coding. Arduino servo controls require a lot of specialized commands and instructions to operate. But luckily all that has been compiled into a dataset called a library. So if we want to include all those specialized servo commands, we can just go to sketch, import library, and choose servo. Now let's create a new servo object called new servo. Then let's add a variable for our potentiometer pin, and also make one that stores the position data that we retrieve from it. Let's make a setup statement and tell it which output pin our servo is attached to. And now let's make a loop that does our movement for us. First, let's set our position value to the position of our potentiometer. Now, the potentiometer position can be anywhere from 0 all the way up to 1023, but the servo only goes from 0 to 180. So let's take our position value data and add a map function to scale it down so that they work with the servo. Now that the position is servo compatible, let's write it or send it to our servo. Lastly, let's add a 15 millisecond delay for it to process before reading the next value. Verify the code and upload it to the Arduino. If everything works well whenever you turn the knob on the potentiometer, the servo should move respectively. So what's a practical application for this? Well, aside from controlling robots, if you use two servos and two potentiometers, you can make a pan and tilt webcam. So go ahead and see if you can figure that out. 
And if you're successful, make a video of it and leave it as a response to this video. If anyone's successful, I'll feature them at the end of my next video. Speaking of which, here's some awesome videos from people that created servo tutorials before I did. Alright, for more tutorials, be sure to check out my channel or my website. And until next time, hack some fun into your weekend.